everyone and welcome to this episode of Mixed Mowers. And in this episode we're going to be looking at a Mountfield lawnmower which has got a transmission um, box failure on it. I did show it previously in one of my other videos somewhere. Um, the, the main cog is actually gone and I have got a parcel here which I'm hoping is the um, second hand transfer box with the axle that comes complete. But before I do, I just want to check out a little lawnmower. I released a video the other day and uh, had a comment come through from Mr. Martin Butler who said that the lawnmower could or possibly could have a bent crankshaft on it. I did reply to Martin to say that um, I don't think it has, it wasn't vibrating my end um, and didn't seem to be having any excessive vibrations but when I reviewed the video um, you can see the lawnmower actually um, moving and the pull cord is oscillating round and round. I'm not quite sure whether or not this is actually due to the fact that I use a Hero GoPro 4 Silver and it has like that goldfish effect, uh, goldfish bowl effect. I'm not quite sure. It didn't seem bent to me. However, I do appreciate the comment, Martin, because it is a safety aspect. I don't want to be selling any lawnmowers to anybody that is not fit for use. So thank you very much for that. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Let's check out this um, lawnmower with a possible bent crankshaft and also let's do this um, Mountfield lawnmower. Okay, so what I've done is I've removed the spark plug itself, tied the hand with the brake back as well. And I've got a piece of wood here and I've roughly lined up best I can the centre of the bolt to this bit of wood. Now what I'm looking for, I'm looking for an oval shape to see if that if those two differ in line at all and by spinning this back is telling me I don't have it oh I moved that one I don't actually have a bent crank that is pretty much as symmetrical as you're gonna get I would say so that looks okay also looking at the distance between the gap at the top of the mower up here you've got about a seven mil gap and about the same at the bottom you bring it to here but you can't do it because you've got a flange there about there about a 10 mil gap there and about the same there Yeah, about the same there. I can't measure off the back because there's nothing to measure off the back. So I would say uh, that is not a bent crank. Let us know what your feelings are. But uh, thank you very much, Martin, anyway, for the heads up. But it doesn't look like it is actually bent to me. And we can take different readings if you wanted to. That looks about lined up. I can't see because the GoPro is right in the way. Let me swing that away a touch. So I'd say that's about symmetrical there. You may argue that because um, of your angle, but that looks about symmetrical. I'm trying to look just beneath the GoPro. I'm not seeing any differential in, in that at all. So I don't think I do have a bent crank. However, I do believe it is actually this GoPro and the angle of which it records. But put it in a comment and let me know your thoughts. And I have just done exactly the same with this one and again that is not showing any signs of bent crank however on the video that I reviewed it shows it to be shaking to death but there you go so let me know what you think about that put in the comments um, and we'll see what we've got to go from there but let's get on with this um, with this mount field I think it's a 454 Okay, so that's really interesting. It doesn't look like it is bent to me. Um, and as I say, the other video I have released since then, which has got the Sovereign self propel on it, that looks like it's shaking to death. Um, but in fact, it's not, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. So, as I say, and keep saying, Martin, you're a star. I mean, I'd like to have comments like that to come through, just so I can double check, because I don't want someone coming back to me saying, something's happened, the blade's come off, or it struck something, or something catastrophic has happened. I can't have it on my conscience, so I'd much rather just take the engine off if it was bent and chop it for another one. Um, but as you can see there, I don't think it is bent at all, but as I say, that's what it is. I have checked it, so let's uh, let's go from there. So, so I have got a parcel here, and I'm hoping this is my back axle. It is the sort of shape I would expect. 
I don't think it's a gasket and diaphragm set. It's well packaged. Now this was second hand, purchased off of eBay, because they go for uh, about £89 brand new, and that out, out, out costs the, the mower. So I'm hoping that this is the right one, and two, that the drive is good. I did ask the bloke if the drive is good, he said it came off of a working lawnmower, so what more can you ask for? My word, it is packaged well. And here we go. Dropped it. Nice well packaged. Got loads of bubble wrap in there. Bits and pieces. Riley would love opening this one up. He loves a parcel. Yeah, so it is a it is a drive. As I say, it is second hand, so it is dirty, all in greasy. I've got a cable tie on here. With some bits and pieces. So in the bag, we've got two gear cogs, which would be for the each end of the axles. Two gear cogs, keyway bearings, split pins. All that, sort of, all that sort of good stuff. So they I think they're good on the actual mower. So these would be good, good spares to have. So that's all the cogs. And then you've got the, the main thing itself. Now I might just, before I do anything, I might just um, push back this, this lever, operate it so it opens, uh, so it activates. Spin that and the axle should spin like that. And there it goes, the axle is actually spinning. So that's good, that is actually working. So, and it says here, mount field SP454, actually on the label, so that's good. So this is, this is second hand, used condition, it wants a bit of a clean up, there's a bit of grass on it, what have you, but um, we hope to get that fitted today. So the story so far on this mount field was, it came in as a part exchange from a bloke who does grass cutting for a living. Just adjust your microphone. And uh, the drive wasn't working, so I, I was hoping it'd just be a belt job had fallen off or, or something similar to that, but it actually wasn't. And it actually was the gear mechanism itself, and the main cog inside the transmission was gone. So they're normally quite pricey, and people generally out the lawnmower at that point and uh, discontinue, just take it for, for spares. But I thought, well, do you know what? I've not done a back axle before, can't be that difficult. So um, I wanted to see if I can get it up and running because it would turn for a pretty penny. It would go for about £120, somewhere around there, about this lawnmower. So what I want to do is I've already got the lawnmower box, the actual back bit. I've already undone that, the, four screw, four, the eight screws. I've undone them to inspect and, um, it. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute because I had to diagnose what, what was wrong with it. And you can't buy the little plastic gear cog for love nor money. So that's where I was. I checked the belt, it wasn't the belt. I checked to see if it was all on the blade boss. It was everything was where it should be. But when I um, tried to fire it, it was working ever so slightly, but had no strength behind it at all. Took the cover off and the gear cog was smashed. So that's where I am. Um, you should better see me put it all back together. So that'd be quite good. And hopefully we can get it up and running and sorted out. What I may do with this, I may take the fuel out of the tank and take the oil out of the engine, because I may have to put this lawnmower completely on, it, on its back so that um, I can access the axle properly rather than just having it on its side, but maybe the better way of doing it. So come on in, let's get down dirty, and let's have a look at this little Mountfield lawnmower. Okay, so now with the all the oil out of the uh, lawnmower and the petrol taken out, I can now start to inspect this back axle. And as you can see, it's this gear cog here. Let me get in a bit closer so you can see it. There's the gear cog. And as you can see, it's completely rounded right off. There's no teeth on there at all. So what I want to do, uh, this gear cock should have a lot, a lot more teeth on it, and this is severely worn. So the new gear, the new gear cog, I hope the second hand part would be 50% better than this would be would be ideal. But we'll see how we go. And all there's about eight, eight different bolts here which you unscrew, pries it apart. It's got a bit of gasket glue on there, pries it apart, and um, away you go. When you pull the cable, this wheel at the back. Will, will um, pull back as you pull the lever, and then this spindle here turns, and which in turns turns this gear cog here. As you can see, I can freely move that, and it's doing nothing at all. So that's what we call in the term as defunct. So let's have a look at trying to get this um, 
this axle off. So I had already made a start already, and as you can see, there's the the top part of the of the gearbox assembly. I took the blade off, and there's a there's a wheel. There's a circle clip in here as well, which holds the gear cog on, which I'll show you in a minute. And just a plethora of nuts, bolts, and, and uh, screws, and what have you. So that's where I am so far. As I say, you join me sort of in mid in mid inspection. So that's where the circuit goes on on that gear cog there. That gear cog just slides off like so. It's got a little tiny um, split pin in there. And there's a little keyway. And there's some teeth on the back there. So when it goes in, that will actually rotate that back axle, as you can see. Yeah, it only goes one way. So that goes in the box. So what have we got next? That's all got to come out. So I'm assuming that little keyway comes out of there. That just pulls out. That keyway is ambidextrous, goes both ways. You've got a little tiny spacer. I don't think it's a bearing. No, a little spacer. And the teeth, the, the grooves go inwards. And we've got a little tiny um, pin just there. So that's going to come out as well. And you get some pair of long nose snips just to have him out. So I've not, not done one of these before, so this would be interesting. There it goes. It's a little, little pin there. It's a washer that goes on that plate. So that now comes apart, slides off. And we've got a bearing inside. Another split pin there, but that, that's going to be staying. Okay, so that's now relatively loose. I want to take the belt off. Now don't forget, there's no HT on this, so this engine can't start. There's no petrol and no oil in it either. So I want to take the belt, slip the belt off. <coughs> Just so it frees up the tension. Take the blade boss off, might be easier. There it goes. Okay, so there goes the belt. That's off. Okay, so flat headed screwdriver in here to remove the, the wheel trim. And then we've got a little tiny little 10 mil. Could be smaller, I'll try a 10. Yeah, 10. And I'll do that wheel nut. Very windy today. I don't know if we get any wind interference. That one slides off. And I'll leave this wheel over this side just so I know where it goes. There's another washer on there. And then another circlip. I need to get my circlip tweezers in or pliers there to move that circlip. Okay, so go very careful with these. So these have a tendency to jump off when, when you, just when you think you've got them they jump off and you lose them so just hold it nice and tight open them up and get your hand around it and get hold of it as soon as you can that goes in the box so on here we have another cog another keyway another spacer I'm going to put all of these together on this on this wheel so now all these go this side and then another pin that one just fell out and then that should then come off maybe yeah that then comes off now hopefully I've got this right I've got a cable to remove it should be up the top back end down in where are we down in here which is your drive cable, so that drive cable off. And that's going to be done just by reaching down inside here and grabbing hold of the spring, pulling it back and moving the arm forward. Should just release that off. They're a bit fiddly because that arm's got to go forward, you see. Like so. 
what I may do, I may just tie the um, the handle off of the um, the brake. There it goes, twist it out. That's it, so it's a, it's a twisting motion, is better. Okay. Right, I'm back. I was off for a little while because uh, Roy the boy rang up and wanted to have a natter. So uh, I had a chat with him. That was cool. Right, so I've got the new, well, not new, it's second hand, um, but it's, uh, it's all working. So let's now try and fit this in. So I've got a spring to fit up here on, the, on this top side. I've got to put a cable in, which that's got to be taken out, it's the old cable, that's got to come out, and the spring on the back side there. So let's just start with removing this cable. This is how you do it, literally you just, literally, I spent half hour doing it, pinch these two bits in, like that, and then just get hold of it, and it will then just retract out. He says, pinch them in, and it retracts out. That, that's how easy they come out, but obviously when it's inside the uh, lawnmower, it's a bit difficult. So, right, so first things first, I'm gonna try and just put this, um, oh, the cable should be okay to go on actually, a bit later on. I've got to put this um, box in, right, that's in, and there's a spring. And my coffee, I've got a bit of grass in my coffee now. It's not what we want. Move it out of the way. Right, now there's a spring right down in here. Let me try and get you in. You can see what I'm talking about. There's a spring right down in here, in the depths. Uh, they come adrift. Let me make sure it's, it's hooked on. It's actually hooked on a cable, which I don't want. I don't get away in there, then. There it goes. So this spring here, that's got to sit on that little tiny hole just there. So I'm guessing, I can see some markings. There's a little tiny recess flap down the bottom here somewhere. I'm guessing it sits into there somewhere and then hooks up. So if I hook it onto there first, which is onto there, and that just, I think, sits on the back side of that there somewhere. Yeah, somewhere there. So it literally just strikes straight down and that just gives you a tension. So that's that. Right, the next thing to do is to connect this cable up, which is your, drive, your actual drive cable itself. And there's your drive cable there. That's what goes down, down underneath, round. And where I took that cable out, where you saw me take it out off the um, when it was off the off the mower, it's got to sit into. Let me find something a bit with a bit of a point to it, so you can see what's going on. So there's a little tiny hole just here, just there. You can see in that. I oh, can't see. It's hard. There you go. Right. A little tiny hole just here. And that's where that cable sits in. <coughs> I'm hoping this shouldn't be too difficult to do. And all you do literally is get your cable, pull it up through. So I'm trying to get you as close as I can get you without you knocking into me. So get your cable up. You get a pair of snippers. Get hold of your cable. And get hold of it. There it is. And then separate the two up. And the first one part of it goes into that groove there. And then just pull it. And that should then start to seat itself. If it doesn't, get hold it around the back of it. Pull it up at the same time. It's very fiddly because I'm trying to get you guys in, you girls and guys in, at the same time as me trying to fit it all on and just pull it through 
and eventually it will just seat itself in. He says, praying it goes in. Has that got it? I think I might have got it. Let's have a quick look the other side. I don't know if it's got that or not. It seems to not be wanting to come back out. Yeah, it's got it. Okay, that's good. Right. Once you get hold of it, get hold of the actual spring itself, give it a bit of a twist with the ply so you've got hold of it, and then with a bit of finger force, just try and manipulate it so it goes on. So I've got hold down around the back of the spring and just start to manipulate it to go on. Nearly there. There it goes there. So that's quite simple. <clears throat> so now we've got the spring in place here. We've got the spring in place here and the cable in place here now. So that's now all tensioned up as it should be. So I'm happy with that. I'm now gonna put the belt on. Okay, so now the belt goes on, on the back wheel of the drive axle. Feed that through onto there and then pull the whole thing forward and slip it, slip it over the boss. Rotate the boss ever so slightly to get that to seat and then just right, keep rotating the boss until it actually goes down onto the actual pulley wheel itself. You must go backwards to get the seat. So that's now seated. Right, now we can come around the other side and start to put these, uh, this axle wheel and assembly all back together. Okay, now the fun starts. Now we've got to remember how it all went back together. So that's your height adjustment lever, that go there. So that's all got to go through this assembly. What's occurring here? Yeah, onto there, onto there, and it's got a it's got a little grommet at the back which just sits onto the deck, and a split pin behind, a cotter pin behind, so that sits like so. Happy with that so far. We've then had that little spacer, I believe. Yeah, we've then also had. That little pin that doesn't didn't have a washer behind it. I can see the rust marks from there to there, so I'm gonna rotate that slightly just so it stays upright. And then had a little tiny keyway, which only goes one way, if you remember. Then had this little assembly. So you just get this right because if, if it goes around the wrong way, it won't rotate the wheels. So let me just try it around that way first. Spin that axle around. That's got him. So forward motion is that way. It's that way round, so if it goes that way, that's not driving, is it? So if that's but then it should be in reverse because it's knocking the wheel back on, on that drive. Okay. That goes there. Need to get the um the little tiny washer and the um nut and bolt to go on top wheel. Right, so the first one to go on would be the circlip, and that sits on this piece just here, which is here. So as I say, with circlips, you need to hang on to them because they're troublesome. Make sure you've got a good purchase on your pliers. 
keep hold of it at all times because they'll ping off and shoot you straight in the eyeball. That's it, that's on. They'll actually tighten up when I do the other side. And then we've got a wheel to put on. That little washer goes on there. And then that goes on to there. And then that goes on to there. I think. So it's my first time at doing this one, so I've not done a, an axle before. Keep dropping stuff. But it's always good to try new stuff. Keep trying new bits and pieces. Broaden your horizons. I may to take it back off again if I put that keyway that, that keyway around the wrong way. But we shall see. Okay. The round is going to be a case of just repeating the same process. So first thing we want will be the I've got the nut washers and spacers. Right, I think I've got all the bits. Yeah. So that's got to sit up in there somehow. Got to sit in that little tiny groove just there, see? Which it doesn't want to go. But it should do. Once I get this in place. There's a tiny bung here, which will bring it all together. I need a, a split pin, a split pin, a, a cotter pin, which goes in there. That all lines up. No, other way around. Yeah, so that one goes in there because that's got a groove cut out here, you see, which goes into this pin here. I'll take that pin out first, that's in reverse. So I'm learning as I go on this one. So you have to bear with me a little bit until I get it all into, all into situ. All right, that seems to be half sensible. I'm missing something, I'm missing a, missing a trick here somewhere. What am I missing? All right, okay, yes, that's the slack. It's just taking the slack up. I was trying to figure out where that other pin went, but I just found it now. So that goes on into place. Pull the axle through. Line it all up. Pull the axle through like so. Then that little pin there. That goes through the back of this hole. These are going to be immensely tight now. I need as much slack as I can get out of that. Because this was tight. This is going to be fiddly. There it goes. So I'll just tap that home with. there. I'm right, happy with that so far. I'm not finding a washer for that. I know there's one definitely went on there. I do have some spares which I bought the other week. These may be a bit big. I know it had a washer on there. I'm positive it did. Okay, um, what's next? This keyway. Goes on there, which I believe I would say that comes out first, and then that little fella goes in. That sits on there like that, followed by the keyway, followed by the gear cog. Which is now driving the whole axle 
and I've got to put a circlip on there. Okay, so grab hold of it, make sure you've got hold of it. Keep pressure on it at all times because they're troublesome. And that's got him. Okay, I think we're nearly there. So either I've got it all completely right or it's all back to front. I'm hoping it's right. That wheel now goes on. That's all turning as it should. A washer, this has got two washers on here. That centralises the main wheel. That's all now got that. And I'm happy. Right, so now I'm gonna put the blade back on and um, we can then turn it up on its side, let it sit for a little while, fill it up with oil, and then we'll try and fire this little baby up. Okay, so it's back up on its wheels now. And one way of testing to see if this is actually actually worked well hopefully anyway that's how I do it is now this wheel should now freely spin forwards which it does but when you pull the brake in of the um, drive in it should lock going backwards which it does so I'm hoping that's actually done it so let me fill it up with oil and then um, I need to get a few pulls without the spark plug in because it's been uh, my spot plug is out um, just so I can uh, make sure that the, all the oil go back to where it belongs because it's been on its, on its head for a little while. Okay so now I've just filled the petrol back up I put a brand new spark plug in it and it does need a new air filter because it's got a foam one in there which is not right I have got some spare but I want to check the drive first before I do anything else to it once it's up and running if it runs and the drive and the driver works I shall give it a full service. It comes with a grass box, it's all complete. It was running beforehand, so hopefully it'll start. I've been down the shops and back for about half an hour, so it's had a good half hour to set up on, it, on its top end to let all the oil run back to where it needs to go to. So let's give it a quick little go. So another fantastic result. A lawnmower that was destined probably to go one way only. Um, the back axle gearbox had failed and lots of people that I know of don't even attempt to do those. But um, with a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of uh, knuckle slapping against the metal, it soon went in. That part only cost me about nine pound on eBay with three or four pound postage and packing. So the lawnmower now stands me in at a whopping uh, 30 pounds that lawnmower now owes me. So that will turn around in the beginning of the summer and it will turn a nice little tidy profit those mount builds do go for a nice little penny so thank you very much for watching this episode of mixed mowers and i hope you found it informative and enjoyed it to a certain degree i would like to add as well thank you very much to martin butler for messaging me about the bent crankshaft but as you can see it wasn't bent but i've got a sneaky feeling it is the camera that i'm using that does it it gives that that, that goldfish sort of effect to it maybe maybe that's what's doing it I'm not quite sure I might even film it on my phone um, I've got a Samsung uh, S9 plus I might even film it on that tie a dead man's handle back and have a look to see if it does the same thing and compare the two it might be something to do with that but I don't know it's not bent so 
that, that I'm happy if I haven't got to replace the engine or try and straighten it, but I don't have a crank straightening device. I may even decide to weld one up and make one at some point if I can find a pattern. So thank you very much for joining me on this lovely windy um, day on mixed mowers. And I hope to catch you very, very soon. If you'd like me to do a certain video or you have a question, pop it down below. I don't mind what sort of questions you ask me, you'll get the honest answer. Um, and I hope to catch you on the next episode very, very, very soon. See you later. Do you feel the